Hello and welcome everybody um, to TEDWIC 2023, um, our hybrid conference of this year. Um, this is the session um, Building Bridges Mapping from, to and between TEDWIC standards. And I'm Mareike Peterson. I'm, my, I'm the moderator of this session together with David Schichtmüller and Holly Little. And um, it's really great to see so many people here in the room and I hope also online, which I don't see for the moment. Um, um, please use, for the online people, please uh, use the whole, so backstage. But if you have any questions, we recommend to use also our Slack channel for this session. So then we have the questions also for later viewing. Um, the session will be recorded um, for later viewing as well. So please speak slowly and clearly that everybody understands you. Um, the presenters of this session have 10 minutes of time. Um, David will keep track of the time and we will give you a sign once it's almost up. And uh, we will have a discussion um, at the end of the session. And with this, I would like to welcome our first speaker of the session, which is um, Kit Lewis. Should work. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I have met a couple of you so far, but um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Kit. I uh, am in the tag here. I also work with outreach and community. Ooh, time. Testing, testing. Am I good? We're good? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, nice. I will do the technical difficulties so you guys don't have to. <laughs> cool. So I'm also um, joining this mapping standards interest group uh, that Holly, Marika, and David um, are giving the session on. Uh, I'm a student at University of Colorado Boulder in Information Science and the BioFrontiers Institute. Um, before I get started, though, I would like to um, read the land acknowledgement for where I do conduct my research, which is at the University of Colorado Boulder, uh, which is Colorado's flagship university. It honors and recognizes the many contributions of indigenous people in our state. T. Boulder acknowledges that it is located on traditional territories and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, and many other nations. Um, and many other Native American nations. Their forced removal from these territories has caused devastating and lasting impacts. While the University of Colorado Boulder can never undo or rectify the devastation wrought on indigenous peoples, we commit to improving and enhancing engagement with indigenous peoples and issues locally and globally. And you can um, check out this link if you would like to learn more about what we're doing. So the situation, um, kind of what I've been working with in the tag with Steve Baskoff uh, is that we've never retired a Tadwick standard and we actually do not currently have a protocol to retire Tadwick standards. So the things that you see on the website that are under like prior standard or 2005 standard, those are all active standards, but they have just um, never been retired. So I do want to be very clear that the project that I'm talking about is definitely a work in progress. Um, and these trajectories and categories are subject to change. So a brief history of Tadwick standards, which um, also is this clock, right? Okay. Um, so a brief history of Tadwick standards is Tadwick was founded in 1985 in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, this was kind of a time if you were in the newbie session yesterday where people would like write a paper and it would be a standard or there'd be this really awesome book and it would be a standard. And then in 2005, there was a ratification meeting where we have our more formal process of how you know um, ratif ratifying standards now. And in between um, 1985 and 2005, we had the internet become publicly traded and available in 1993. So that definitely changed a lot in terms of how we dealt with biodiversity and also how we connected with each other and the globe. So the current project, and thanks to Steve Baskos, Baskoff, the website has already been somewhat updated um, to include uh, our current standards. There's no more draft standards. And the project that I worked on mostly, definitely with a lot of help from Steve, was looking through um, our Tadwig standards and making categories for how they were being used. So this is what I like to call grounded theory light because there were a couple of parameters that were already there, but I tried to go in with no assumptions um, based on what the standards and how they were interacting with the community. So the thematic codes for standards that um, I came up with was no longer maintained by Tadwig, 
superseded. So something that is um, be, is either included or um, has come after a previous standard, which is still active, retired, and then an active standard. So these are what the, the categories could be going forward. Um, so the other thing is we're reassessing how we categorize standards because a lot of them are um, uh, the... Mm, Oh man, I'm blanking out, but they are, uh, controlled vocabularies and, um, I will have to, I will post in the Slack the exact word I'm looking for because it just left my brain. Um, and also creating a process for retirement, because like I said, we do not have that so far, but more related to this session is what could be on the horizon after we do, um, go through the protocol of Pinchley retiring standards. So a couple of things that would have been very, very helpful um, while I was doing this would be mapping to standard to standards to each other internally, mapping standards internally and externally, and then mapping standards temporally or archivally once we do retire some standards potentially in the future. So internal standards, um, it would have been really helpful for visualizing our standards information ecosystem. I think it was brought up. Um, in one of the newbie sessions yesterday where there's a couple of standards um, that are kind of redundant, which isn't necessarily bad by any means, but it's good to know where those redundancies line, uh, redundancy lie and mitigate them because we are um, a smaller community and we have a lot of things going on in our professional and personal lives and we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel around each other um, and work as efficiently as possible. Uh, and then external standards. I love this image. It's called a data hairball. And as somebody who deals with like information overload, this becomes a real thing very, very quickly. Um, and even in our own community. Uh, so like I said, mapping to external standards could definitely help mitigate unnecessary redundancies. So like if another consortium or another area already had a standard created, if we could borrow from that or even co-op with them, that'd be really helpful to saving time specifically I know that there was, um, I believe, either an interest group or a task group centered around genomic standards in, um, in TADWIG, but also the Genomics Consortium has some pretty awesome standards. So if we could like use those, um, but also like make them a TADWIG standard, uh, that would be super cool. And then ways that we could maybe keep track of all of this is like connecting APIs to the standards. So we know when they've updated the standards. So we're not just telling people, yeah, this looks great. I've at least it did when I audited it like three months ago, um, partnering, partnering with these communities uh, to mutually benefit making standards um, and to get like fresh ideas because biodiversity is such a large domain. Uh, and then mapping to industry standards and research. So there's a lot of biodiversity research that's actually coming up in the private sector too. And it'd be really cool to get some of those people in on what they're doing, but also making sure um, that they have standards to follow. Okay. Uh, and then temporal and archiving, archival mapping, so mapping after retirement. This could kind of be like um, if a standard got merged, if it was like a parent-child relationship, like there's this one standard and it fit really, really well into a new standard. Um, and being able to do that time-wise because things change sometimes rapidly, sometimes slowly. But as things change, we do want to track the context of where that is happening. Um, and also looking at standards that are no longer maintained by TADWIG that are still TADWIG standards. So specifically, uh, Index Herbary Orum, I believe, is managed by the New York Botanical Gardens, but it is still a TADWIG standard. Um, so figuring out kind of how to better communicate that, but also working with Index Herbary Orum. Um, but yeah, so that is my presentation. Um, I want to thank Steve Baskoff so much because he's been very, very helpful. Uh, and the entire technical architecture group has given awesome feedback. Um, and I would also love to invite anybody to come talk to me or Steve um, or email us if you have any ideas about this. Because like I said, this is a fairly new project and we definitely want community input. Um, thank you to Marika, Holly, and David for ho hosting the session and um, allowing me to speak. And I'd also like to thank my funding institutions, Information Science Department at CU Boulder, and the BioFrontiers Institute. And with that, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I think we have some time for questions. Uh, or if you just want to email me. Um, or if you just want to email me. That was my email. It's very easy. It's kristen.lures at colorado.edu. Okay.
So thank you. So we will wait for questions until the end of the sessions. But if you have something in mind, just post them in our uh, Slack channel. And the next presentation is online.